Hello and welcome back to Seconds Out. My name is Eamon Khan here with rising heavyweight talent. Back out again very soon to Moses Atama. Moses, good to see you. How you doing? I feel like we were only speaking a couple of days ago. No, literally. We're back here. Um, I'm all good. Good to hear that you're doing well. Last time you spoke to me on the interview heading into fight, you said to me, I just wanted to have fun. Did you have fun last time out? Yeah, I did. I wanted, I wanted the fight to go a little bit longer. But um, it is what it is. I feel like the referee was just, just waiting to stop the fight even before it started. So I can't do nothing about that. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you next. When are you going to have more than one round of fun? Uh, I don't know. We see when my opposition steps up, innit? Mm. We're, in, we're in a couple of minds with my next opponent at the minute. Um, we got a German kid and we got um, Ebenezer Tete. So I don't think that's going to be a one round job, but if it is, I'm not surprised. Yeah, so you're you're back out 18th of May. Uh, as far as I'm aware, you got Mazensev as the fight that's coming up next. Um, is that the step up you feel that you're looking for and maybe the fans are looking for too? Yeah, 100%. I'd love him. Um, he's got a good record. And obviously, it's going to be for a title, so um, I can't complain. That's what I've been asking for. Mm -hmm. Going off of his record, taking it on face value, it seems like on face value, he's got a bit of a punch to him. Does it? And I imagine. Uh, it, uh, but let, let that me. That doesn't matter. Yeah, I just wanted to ask you like, does your approach change much when you're facing a fighter who can crack a bit? Nah, everybody in this heavyweight division can crack. It doesn't doesn't matter who it is. It's just um, some people might you might be boxing someone that's got a better chin, and obviously it's not on the record, so it don't matter. It don't matter. Do you feel good at the around the two hundred forty pounds mark when it comes to you fighting? Yeah, of course. Why would I not? Why would I not be um? Why would I not be in this heavyweight division? It's the best division in the world. You ain't gonna make weight, and you get more money. No, but I mean, in terms of like, do you like to be maybe a little bit lighter, or a little bit heavier? Do you, or do you feel you found the right right point for you? No, I haven't tried. I haven't tried nothing out yet. I haven't really gone there. I've always sat around the same way. I haven't really gone up or down yet. Um, I feel like I'm never gonna be. I'm not gonna be as strong as these boys now, anyway. Because obviously, I'm I'm only a kid, and just the speed. Is what is what I feel like is going to be winning me these fights, and yeah, I'm staying as light as possible while still maintaining my strength, and I feel like I'm slowly starting to get to my to my to my weight. Yeah, because the first couple of fights you had, you're around like close to two fifty. How did you feel at that weight? I felt chubby. Mm. What's that? <laughs> what's that equate to? No. I just... I just feel greasy. Mm. Um, yeah, I feel like the weight, the weight had to come off a little bit. I just felt, yeah, I felt a little bit slow. And obviously, since I've since I've lost the weight, I've had five first round knockouts. Mm -hmm. Indeed, on that streak as well too. I wanted to talk to you as well too. Last time out, we kind of spoke about your faith and some of the. Uh, verses in the Bible. Another one I picked up from your social media is Proverbs seventeen seventeen. A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born for a time of adversity. You got your brothers by your yeah, side my... as well too. Just talk to me about that uh, verse in the Bible and what it's meant to you throughout your life so far. You know what that that was the picture of me and when my, me and my brother was hugging in it, and my other brother put that on there. I didn't really understand that quote. If I'll be honest, but. I just reposted it anyway. Um, that's something. Your brother's your brother's always gonna be there. Um, it's your it's your own blood. Um, and yeah, I feel like I feel like we got we got a perfect thing going. There's there's uh three brothers or four brothers, and uh, we kind of just bounce off each other. Um, we always help each other in times of struggle. Um. And then when it's good times, we all celebrate together. And um, I just feel like I'm blessed to have him. When your brother suffered his first loss in the pros, what was your role in kind of boosting him back up? What did you say to him? 
I didn't say nothing. I didn't boost him nothing. It's um, it's something that he's con- kind of got to deal with on his own because I feel like if you hold, if you hold your hand for it, then it's I don't know. Just when you when you when you when you like have a feeling like that and you kind of have someone that holds your hand for it or or like tells you um, A B C, then you kind of just get comfortable with that. Mm. Do you get what I'm trying to say? So I never said I never said nothing. Um, obviously, he knows the feeling I got towards it, but I never I never said nothing. Never embraced it. I just said. It's just a minor thing. Um, he'll be back, and I feel like that's that was enough. Because I feel like with that, you kind of have to go for it on your own. Are you the tough love kind of guy? Yeah, it's in the, it's sort of the position when you're the younger brother, isn't it? It's sort of because the older brother's kind of been, I guess, on the journey of treading longer on the earth. So you've got to kind of play that role right. I'm in. A similar sort of position in in my family, so I can sort of relate on that point. Um, but I get that side of it. The other thing we talked about as well too is we were talking about Mike Tyson, but you said to me, "Look, my the guy I looked up to when I was uh, looking at things was George Foreman." Now you can tell me otherwise, but I don't see much of George Foreman in your game. Tell me, is there like what parts of no, George? I I just appreciated his style and. Just like his his um aura, I never said that I wanted to implement any of it in my game, but I'm just saying like I could just appreciate his career. You know, when you first started, did you try and replicate any part of him? Yeah, I guess like trying to be like I don't know. I just it wasn't like an intimidating thing, but it's like I didn't want to seem approachable. And then that just made me, when I was watching my stuff back here, it just made me look like an idiot. So <laughs> I was just like, Do you know what? I'll go stop that. Yeah, because I remember listening to Colin Hart, I think it was on Boxing News, and he said that George Foreman was really quite an in- intimidating figure, but then he sort of softened throughout the um, later years of his career. But you're, at least from my experience, is a lot more approachable. So maybe if I caught you a couple of years back, you weren't as approachable before? No, I just to be honest, if I'll be honest with you, I just don't like like talking to new people. I don't really know their intentions. I don't really know sometimes what they want. And it's just like I didn't want to give off the impression that I'm approachable because it's like, why? To get what I mean, like why are you talking to me? But now I kinda have to have the fact that it's gonna come with the job and I kinda just have to be um be nice to people. It's like even the other day we was watching the boxing at um, a sports club and um, and some guy kept looking at me and I was like, I just I had to go up and like talk to him like see what, what the problem was or whatever. He was like, mate, you're on TV. Like, <laughs> I was like, you, you can't get mad that someone's looking at you. Yeah, I was like, Joe, I apologise. But I was actually storming there ready to like, do you know what I mean? Throw hands or whatever. I'm not really, but... Um, but yeah, I kind of, kind of forget that it comes with the job. Yeah, I think personally, from an outside looking, I think you've grown uh, to that, and you've definitely grown into, and you're going to grow more into that media sort of role. So take that as it comes, just uh, mm-hmm. as as I see it coming. But also, look, a lot of people have been very impressed by you and your career so far. No more so than the current heavyweights who are bringing you in for sparring. But for this fight, where are you setting up your your camp. This is. I've literally just had a conversation with my manager. We don't know yet. We're in two minds. Um. But as of I know for now, where my where my home is at the minute is with Al Smith and Eddie Lamb. I don't know if it will change or not, but that's currently where I'm training. How much do you have to manage the calls from these top heavyweights are saying, "Look, we want you for sparring." on this month we want you this week that week how much do you have to kind of take on take on board and manage those experiences you want but then also your own career no i don't i don't i don't really like go out to spa people unless it's the big names like, like obviously tyson and joshua and all them lot 
if anyone if there's anyone else they can come to me really. Um but yeah, I'll just I'll just make sure when I'm training with them I'm giving my hundred percent and um and do my own training also. Like um I feel like every every fighter has a little aspect of coaching themselves in them. So um you don't need a coach all they're like they're hundred percent of the time. Um yeah, I feel like you can get yourself ready sometimes and I've 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 done it. Have you got the call back for Fury's camp as he prepares for the rearranged date for Usyk? No, currently no, not not at the minute, no. You expecting the call? <laughs> I don't know. Do you want the call? Yeah, it'll be nice. It'll be nice to spar Fury. Um obviously like I said, I enjoyed I enjoyed the camp I was with in Morecambe and in Saudi Arabia. Um, it was a blessing to be out there with him and his brothers. And um, yeah, why not? The other side of it as well, too, is I saw your, you speaking on TalkSport and you were asked about the differences between Fury and Joshua. I'm not going to ask you that here because you've answered that, but you mentioned that the Joshua spine you did was when you were 16. You've come a long way since then. Are you mm. kind of someone who wants the goal to have that sparring again with him so you can see yourself where you've improved as well with another top heavyweight? Oh, 100%. But the Joshua that I sparred when he was 16 and the Joshua that's about now, it's not the same Joshua. So mm. even if I went in there and I got worse, then it's not really a good gauge because it's not the same Joshua. I feel like the Joshua that's, that's fighting now is very, like, it's very calculated, very, like, doesn't, like, put emotions in there, whereas the Joshua that I sparred when, when he was fighting Uzik was very, like, very cheery. Mm. I don't know if you can be like that as a boxer. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Can you break that down for me, that very cheery? He's, like, just, like, I don't know. He's just he's just happy with he was just I was just happy with everything, I guess. And you can't you can't like really be happy while being a boxer. Like I don't really know how to, how to explain it. Like every boxer knows that like, you gotta have some element of like like miserable to yourself, do you know what I mean? Like and uh he just looked like he didn't he didn't really have any at that point. Like for example when he boxed at Wembley and he's, he was walking to the ring, and normally like you have your game face on, you're switched on, you're walking, whereas AJ was like like just laughing and cheering and waving to everyone. Do you know what I mean? He didn't really look like he's he had his his eye on the game. Where a second fight, however, he he wasn't doing all that. He was just walked straight to the ring, meant business. Mm. Couple of final things from me, Moses, and I'll let you go. A lot of people were wanting to, when the 5v5 was announced, they were matchmaking and they were looking to see you in the picture, matchmaking you against the likes of uh, Johnny Fisher and others. Um, whether that fight was going to materialise or not, that's a good sign as to people wanting to see you back in the ring. Have you noticed that the, there's fans and there's following that's coming around you now as you keep putting these string of knockouts together? Yeah, 100%. Um, when this 5v5 comes on, hopefully I've got a higher ranking and... I'll be able to fight. No disrespect to Johnny Fisher, but the other boys on the on the Queensby uh, matchroom roster. But if I'll be honest, like there's a lot of fighters in um on the Queensby roster that I can easily make fights with. So, um, like I said, I'll just leave that job down to Francis, my manager Francis, and just hopefully just keep stepping me up, keep stepping me up. I want to get there as soon as possible, and. Not wasting any time. Because yeah, I think Boxwick, I had a quick look, I've got you rated as the 13th best heavyweight in the UK. And there's a lot of competition in the UK right now, but that's saying something about where you're at as well, too. Mm. 100%. To be honest, I agree with him because, like, if he was just talking about careers and what people have proven, like, obviously I will be 13th, but I just feel like you just need to test me. And then you know that that's not the correct number. There's no way I'm 13. Mm. Lastly, for me then, against Mizensev, just looking to have fun? <laughs> no, man. I'm, this is Saudi Arabia. It's on the big show, the big lights. Of course, I'm, 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 like, I'm going there to do a job. Moses, looking forward to you doing a job. Hopefully, I'm there to watch you in action as well, too. Thank you for speaking much. seconds out. Speaking again soon.
Thank you.